Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing, well, we're discussing the financial criteria associated with Thai retirement visas. And specifically, we're discussing kind of the evolution of these financial criteria. The reason I decided to make this video, it was because of a comment on one of our channels. Quoting directly from the comment, aware of the stated combo amount, but always wondered about the decided criteria of the exact amount of 800,000, question mark. So that's the 800,000 lump sum requirement for Thai retirement visas. It's a part of the financial criteria for maintaining a Thai retirement visa. You can use the lump sum of 800,000 baht bank balance in an account. Quoting further, not a high amount for everyone, but guessing expat retirees will contribute a fair amount in spending and living there anyway. Why not 200, 400, 500,000? So, yeah, why not? Well, at one time, yeah, it was 200, and I believe it did go up to 400 or 600 before it ended up being 800. And I've done other videos on this channel specific to this topic, and frankly, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact amounts. I remember back in 92, it was a 200,000 baht bank balance, and then at one point it went upward to like 400 and 600 and then ultimately in 97 or i think it was 98 actually the aftermath of the 97 financial crisis here in thailand it went to 800,000 for retirement visas and then ever since we've been operating with the 800,000 baht bank balance requirement so why did it change well i think circumstances just changed i think one of the big reasons for the 800,000 baht requirement post 97 was and I, I actually read a book, there's a specific passage, I read a book by a gentleman named Jim Rickards, uh, he's an attorney as well, but he's a kind of an ec economist, not kind of, he is an economist, he wrote a number of books. In one of them he talked about Thailand was the perfect example of a, of a major shift in, um, well, in economics between the West and Asia, and how in 97, or post-97, Thailand was doing everything in its power to get foreign currency into the country to help improve the position of the bot. And I think the 800,000 bot requirement from 98 onward is probably part and parcel. It goes along with that. It's, it was part of the policy to, to get in as much foreign reserve as they could, while at the same time, presumably attracting a high volume of folks into the country, of folks into the country as retirees. The, and then as Rickards goes on, you know, over time, and it kind of started to tilt in around 2007, eight, and then now, you know, although up until COVID, COVID changed things pretty substantially, but up until then, you know, it was actually looking like the bot was getting stronger and they were doing everything they could to weaken it. Long story short, yeah, this, this came about over time because policy changes occurred where they wanted to see retirees show more funds in an account. Do I know exactly where the number came from? Not really. It looks like it just went up in increments. I think to some degree it went up you know, if you think about it, going back into 92, I think the bot was still pegged to the dollar or it, it came off its peg right at that, right around that moment. So prior to then, you know, 200,000 bot was a very different proposition than what it would be six years later. You know, it, you know, the bot weakened substantially against certain foreign currencies. So that may actually have, that may actually explain why there was this policy change. 